today we're visiting a very special fort, or rather a battery, Battery de les Parons. It's southeast of Verdun, and it was an early artillery fort. Unlike anything I've ever visited before or certainly shown you, it's guarding the Moselle and Meuse River and the river valleys below, including the industrial village of Fourage, and its key military industries there. The battery was constructed in 1879, incorporating the latest lessons from the Franco-Prussian War. And along with its other sister forts in the area, this battery is situated on the spur of the hill, protecting the joining of the two rivers, thus an invasion route into France, as well as an important rail center. It was the first target of the Prussian cavalry in 1870, as from there they can advance into the rest of France. In this area there was always military presence given the strategic location, and nearby the Second French Army originally had its headquarters. During the First World War, a German railway gun was pulled into the area and began shelling the fort and the village here, almost throughout the entire war. On one day alone in 1917, 900 shells from the railway gun fell on the town below. There's 220 people that were stationed here in the battery, and it is labeled the battery, however it is an actual fort. The early design makes it really unique. Here you can really see the transition from castles with cannons on ramparts into the modern construction with special concrete and cannons and steel domes. Originally there was four 155mm de Bonge cannons on the ramparts and two armored casemates for the 155 long cannons. Then later, before World War I, a Galopin racing turret was installed with two 155 long guns as well. Also, several cannon shelters were installed on the ramparts, and from there the cannons could be pulled into action on the ramparts. They were replaced by the 95mm cannons that was held in these shelters. These were the first steel guns of the French army. This is a really cool place to see. to the, which they've uh, found in the fort of Rot. It had fallen off its mountings, all to the ground. Look at the, uh, sorry, look at the designs. Isn't that beautiful? That, it's not it just is. an armored gate. It's, uh, it's a little work of art. That is very impressive. I do like the details. And look at the, uh, the, the grill at the top, this one, the, from the design world. It's, it's, like, it's like trees, isn't it, at the top? Wow. It's a book. 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 It's a <laughs> you can see the thickness of the concrete. <laughs> yeah, ventilation holes. Really? Yeah. And it's uh, covered by the lavender. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be covered by little sort of uh, like little greenhouse things. Two, three, four cloisons. You can't get the bottom. Ah, there's two. Là, on va en parler de ça là où quand on ira là-bas. Bon, alors, um, tu voulais les avoir ici? A lot of insulation on these. Yeah. Oh wow. Was this a powder magazine or what was this before? Chambre 40 personnes. 40 men, bedroom for 40 men. In 1940, the Germans attacked. Uh, they captured the fort and the battery. In a couple of days of combat, the French lost five men killed inside the, the battery. The late Baron. In 1940, so it 1940. was over 90 in the World War I, World War II. Yeah, the fort was captured in World War II. Alors, les Allemands se servent du fort et de la batterie comme dépôt, mais dépôt d'attendance. Right, it was a supply depot. 
okay. Okay. used by the Germans, which is why the turrets that we've got into the city are still in place. Well, you have a tool, huh? Oui, oui, oui. Vous gardez les, vous couvrez les trous dans le, le, les plafonds. <laughs> they kept the turrets and uh, cupolas in place uh, because if they removed them, then water would get into the holes. <laughs> so they use as a storeroom. Les Allemands évacuent le fort donc au mois de septembre 1944. L'armée américaine avance. September 1944, the Germans evacuated the fort. The advance of uh, Patton's Third Army. Les Allemands réquisitionnent les hommes valides de froid et de champignons. Ah right, all the inhabitants were uh, called upon to uh, empty the fort. So what did the Germans have in here? Inhabitants of Fruard have uh, shown Alain uh, white German camouflage uniforms for the Eastern Front, oh. which were stored here. And in their hurry to leave, the Germans had left them behind and the inhabitants had actually uh, taken them away. Alors, Ce qu'il est bon, et je le dis à chacun, à chaque fois que nous avons une visite, heureusement que les Allemands ont occupé les lieux. Hein? Ils n'ont rien ravagé. All right. It's uh, lucky that the Germans actually used the fortifications and didn't destroy them or, or scrap the or yeah. metal. Yeah. The sister fort uh, in uh, Pont Saint Vincent, which had the, the second uh, gigantic uh, Galopin twin turret. Uh, Obviously, it's in Tor took that away for scrap. Yeah, yeah there's no metal left in any of the forts down there. And this is a masonry fort, which was a masonry fort reinforced with special concrete. So no rebar later on added on. Is there any um, uh, bit of armée? Which is easy. Yes, on va voir. On va voir. We're going to see. Alors, okay. après après le départ des Allemands. C'est les forces américaines qui occupent le fort. Ah, les Américains qui ont pris le fort. Comme euh, dépôt de, 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 de nourriture. Ah, c'est un food dépôt. <laughs> Américains sont plus grands. Combi, spam. C'est du spam. Le bon. spam et euh, le combi. Yes, yes, c'est bon. Bah, les, euh, les, bon les, les Américains s'en vont, les, faux, les ouvrages sont récupérés par l'armée française. Yeah. Et ils stockent multitude, des centaines et des centaines de tonnes d'obus. Ah, si bien au fort qu'ici. All right. The, the French army took over from the Americans and used it as a munitions depot with thousands of shells. Le 1963, le 26e régiment d'infanterie de Nancy, le fameux 26e Airy, euh, prend possession du fort et il se sert du fort comme centre d'entraînement commando. Ah, in uh, 1963, the infantry regiment from Nancy took over the fort and used it as a commando training base. Okay, so it's had history. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely never seen ventilation breaks on the floor of any of these forts. That's what that is. And it's a Spiders. Very complex. Well, if this is a bedroom, you don't want them crawling over you in the night and laying their eggs in your skin. So um, I'm biting you because French spiders bite. Fuckers. Um, and so the, the, the insect repellent is a paint made up using alcohol and a lot of chemicals to ward off the insects now and then the photo Troyon, we saw it. And I, as I said, the French are the experts in fortification. They always have been. And here's the proof. Oui, les Français sont toujours les... Well, look, and all, look, all the holes we normally fall in are gloves over them. Are these ventilation or drainage? So is it drainage or ventilation? Okay, that's kind of what I thought. My God, that's a uh, uh, 95, 95. 95. They got a 95 Lali tall. Yeah, and, and a Debonge 90. That is fantastic. 
So that's the 95 they replaced it with. The, the, uh, they they replaced the, the big guns with the little ones which could go into shelters more easily. It's a Laditov 95mm, classed as a heavy gun. It's the smallest of the heavy guns, the 95 Laditov. And that is. They got the breech mechanisms. Is the debonge system, but this is the well, there is an 80 uh, for the cavalry and the 90 for a field gun. It's a, it's a machine gun carriage. Is that it? Uh, a, a friend of Alan gave him two uh, cannon wheels, and one of the Benimol, the, the members' association, has made a machine gun carrier. Was the Milkeurs in use in 1914-15? No. What, which what? Milkeurs. That wasn't in use in World War One. Yeah, sure. It, it was. Yeah, the, uh, the Hotchkiss was invented. But we're not talking about we're not talking about the uh, Napoleon the Third Milkeurs. So they upgraded it's a newer one with the same this name. This is a French with Besides the amazing collection of artillery they found in here and have on display, I always was surprised at these vertical ventilation ports in the roofs of these forts. However, one has to think that when these were built, plummeting fire was less of a concern than it is in later more modern wars. And it really is an interesting throwback when you see the brick and stone walls you can see from inside and also later when we go down below. But of course, everything was put together with their special concrete from before World War I. But steel rebar, not so much. The guy who lived in the, the city, the little barracks that we passed, his father would nick this from the fort, so he gave it back. And the fils nous l'a rapporté, on l'a présenté. Ah, right. They, they originally collected the rainwater, but when they concreted it over, they couldn't do that anymore. So they pumped the water up from the river. So this was originally exposed? No, no, there were pipes leading in. Okay. Oh, that, okay, that's what it was. And then they had the pumping station down below. Vous aviez commencé à l'extérieur, premièrement. Oh, that was a question. Yeah, that's a good one. Just that. Where can we find a canon? Where can we find a canon? Where can we find a canon? It belongs to the army, and they said, we've got a... We've, we've remade the casemate. Have you got a 155? And this is how they found it. Oui, artillery. Ça, c'est le matériel qu'on a the ammunition arrives on the railway. And then it's carried up. Yes. Okay. So it comes from this way and down there. There was nothing except an empty casemate. And they remade what half of the mounting, the other the bottom half of the mounting, and we fed away by scrap merchants. And they remade the whole thing. Wow. <laughs> but you can think still, so they're actually going to install the cannon there. Yeah, I don't know. 
enlevé 157 tonnes de cochonneries diverses et variées. Oui. Et puis à chaque bébé de la pêteuse, on triait. C'est parce qu'on a trouvé. And then when they dug out the pit underneath the drawbridge, they sifted through 157 tons of debris in the ditch. They sifted through, and guess what they found? They found the original deering. <laughs> and when they remade it, they made it. <laughs> <laughs> right, in 1912, a firm came here and they put an overpressure mechanism here. There was a manual uh, ventilator there, and then they, they pumped air under pressure. Alors, so like in Maginot, oui, the dans... casement's always under pressure. So that would have been sealed off back then as well, with the... Yeah. yeah, and the smoke would have... For the smoke yeah. would have, couldn't escape. Et, alors, dans... This really has been an amazing restoration project of bits and pieces they found. And here on the outside you see the heavy steel lid that would slide up and down to expose the cannon barrel. And I for one cannot wait to see when this giant cannon barrel is back in place where it belongs. The elevator, the elevation piston, took it apart, cleaned it, filled it with petroleum jelly and it works again. Really? The scrap merchants have left the rear part of the mounting underneath in the tunnel, which leads to the armor lifting mechanism. And they, they, they welded it back on. <laughs> Is that the problem? They remade the thing. There's a, a, a firm in, um, in Verdun which is remaking the chains to actually lift the, 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 the arm plate. It, it, it's, it's, a tongue-shaped piece of armor which goes up, covers the hole, and then it drops down on the inside. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, it's on the exterior. And the levers for, for that was in here for the armor plate. Yeah. The ammunition storage is 30 meters below, and we'll see that later if they let me in. So they would be wheeled up here on small lifts, and then into the smaller intermediate storages next to the cannons. This is amazing. We're working in a circle again. Like at, uh, at, at uh, yeah. Ah, uh, turrets. So they get. Uh, there's another 75 turret here. Is there to install them in? No, not yet. So they're just sitting here waiting for another fort. So this, um, this is a tra trading object. Yeah, on connaît un fort qui en a besoin. Yes, don't they need them? Yeah, this is unique in the world. Et c'est similaire à Drummond, le Galopin 65, le Oui, le même système de balance. This is bigger than uh, Duomont or same size. Ici, totalement pétissant, enfin tout ce qui est pétissant pour moi, c'est 160 tonnes. 160, 160 tonnes, monsieur. 70 tonnes in Duomont. Because the guns are bigger, and there are two of them. Ah, il y a plus de goût, ça y est, il y a un flotte qui arrive. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, you can see the thing. Is this the recoil mechanism on the side of the barrels? Yeah. That is the weirdest recoil mechanism I've ever seen. Uh, well, you can spin it around if you want. You can spin it around. <laughs> I know. New cam. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The Oh, 
Oh, uh, what time do we have to leave? Uh, we don't have to go anywhere. Wolf. Chiquita, are you in the Okay. This this rod there are latches inside there which which open, which unlatch and the turf descends. Now to do it manually, uh, well they haven't got the mechanism. You have to uh, compress the springs manually. They haven't got that yet. Those are the weirdest recoil springs I've ever seen up there. Well, they're not just for recoil, are they? They're to descend, make the turf descend. That's the thing. Oh. <laughs> So are we saying the recoil is only 15 centimeters? Was that what you said? Yes. Is that seriously? I'm taking it, this is the powder magazine back here. And down here in the powder storage below the huge Gellampah turret with the giant guns, you see one of my favorite details. You see the little walls that are sectioned off of the little hole for light with a glass on both sides so that no spark could possibly hit and ignite the powder. We've seen these little windows in a whole lot of other abandoned forts, but here you can actually see what it would look like, and that's amazing. No, this is the barracks down here. And this, I'm not entirely sure what this is. And just outside here are a few things you also will never see. Here on the ramparts that looks like an old castle, you'd wheel up the cannons and fire over the ditches, but you will also see something else. You will see the peacetime lavatories, the toilets, if you shall, right out here where you would usually have the powder stores and wheel the magazine in is the original toilet. Yes. Peacetime outdoor toilets. You gotta love that. Yeah, th things you don't see often. <laughs> you gotta love this. I, I love this. With the speaking tube to the little seat.
calcul. Après, sur le ouvrage de la falleuse, c'est bon, mais... <laughs> you get a little the seat he's got here in this observation turret with a little speaking tube. So this dome number two, and you get an armored hatch. The firing, uh, the firing stand for their uh, rifles. And you're standing in the artillery position. Here above the city, you can really imagine how this fort evolved from the time where you had horse-drawn cannons on these ramparts, and now it's occupied by steel observation ports and steel domes and cannons in reinforced positions. That is just an amazing piece of evolution in one fort that, from the memory of one wall, saw two more. Now for each of the firing sides, you'd have one of these steel heavy-duty observation ports that we've seen before and we all agreed we do not want to be inside if hit. And again, with a throwback to the old castles from back in the day, you would see ditches, you would see walkways where some of them were covered and some of them were in the open. And here you see the heavy steel lid of the big cannon inside, and it, you can imagine what it would take to lift that thing up, but certainly the gun would have been shielded if hit. And no, I didn't just clean it up just for you, they actually have a few of these. And look at this, the, 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 the dry weather last year, moved the grass, split the concrete. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not beautiful. the concrete is probably the easiest fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a very thick concrete covering over the, uh, the, cast, uh, the cast iron, isn't it? Over the top. You, but you've got to hit it first, haven't you? Unfortunately today, there are very few of these Gamapa turrets still in existence. And one thing I really wanted to do is show you what it looks like with somebody standing next to it. Here are the Germans during the Second World War, because it is just enormous. It is a lot bigger than what you typically see at the Maginot Line from World War II. This is just very, very large, and you saw me inside it, it felt a little cramped. But it takes up quite a lot of real estate when you get out here. This is a very large gun turret. 160 tons. Raising dome with the wow. Can't believe this is still here. It survived after all these years. Nobody ruined it or scrapped it. Absolutely amazing. All the little details, how it's held in place, it's amazing, that's amazing to see. observation posts in all corners. I used to see three of them here for artillery observation. Smaller domes, bigger domes. And here's the cannon they're restoring. This is really fascinating. This is such an amazing job they've been doing. Again, small army of volunteers with a couple hundred euros a year. That's one thing you need to remember. The Americans liberated this place, so this would be a great place for all you guys in the service to come here and take a look at. This is just amazing. It's been restored by a bunch of volunteers for very little money every year, as usual. 
and out here intersected by small tunnels that will lead inside to the main fort proper, you would have the ramparts where you would wheel out the cannons from their shelter and from in here you would have the powder for them where they could then shell in all different directions and protect the fort and the town. But this is just something you don't see. The later forts were completely covered and before that you had castles that were far more in the open. That one was in here. There's hey. Let's just face it, what is the cheapest and most efficient lawnmower you have? It's in a firing position. Right. I need fifteen. Oh, See a lot of grass. And up here you have the cannon shelters and you will make a note of the red line. Because if you paid attention to all these episodes, you know what that means. There will be a quiz. That is very clever. And they, they pull them up and then they pull them up the ramps to the firing positions. They got these rails from the fort. Observation dog. Yes. It's a little crooked. This fort is just completely different in its construction than, for instance, um, uh, uh, geez, Dormont, Dormont, for instance, yeah, the whole layout. Yeah. These, these are older in design, aren't they? But those, yes. I thought those are Oh, that's where, okay. Yeah, that was always on to a cap on you. Here's the munition, munition elevator. Yes. That we just saw from downstairs. Yes. Now please walk. Always walk. Seventy-four. <laughs> Seventy-four more. Really? So again? <laughs> so now we're going under the moat, or under the under the ditch. Wait. And coming up to the caponia up here, and I love those. had the Hutch kids revolving, revolver cannon here. And here you have the ditch. Wait. And there was a little diamond ditch. A little ditch. A little ditch. Yes. Boucher. Boucher. Boucher with uh, rock and uh, concrete. Oh. Because for uh, this cannon yeah. here, hop! Oh, to hold the back. Oh. And then for grenades in the. All of it, no bullet. No bullet. So this was just for grenades. And smoke. Oh wait, yes. this was ventilation. Wait. And this was firing? Canutia. Canutia. Wait. Ooh. And to see. I love this. Oh, we haven't even gotten around yet. Ooh. Yay. And uh, with uh, um, Canon uh, Blue Squillas. Canon Blue Squillas here. Yeah. With. Uh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. For oh, you should still see the tracks in the ground. Well, right? well, and the uh, demon. Oh, yes. Yes. This is just such a beautiful piece of masonry. Origin. Original, yeah. 1899, And besides my inherent love for Caponiers, if you look at this, this could be a medieval castle. This is brick and stone and mortar. This could have and have been built like this 
for hundreds of years before this, this was literally the last types of fortresses that was constructed in the old way and then with new weaponry and methods installed as the world wars came on the horizon. Yes, and we got the stairs coming up. The fitness part of the fort. This is not so bad. As long as you don't have to do it 10 times a day. The noise is an old World War II generator left behind here by the Americans that actually powers the whole installation, but as far as I can tell, it was not on the grid. And yes, I am definitely going down below to see the other end of the ammunition lift. Quarters. I have come to believe that if you live anywhere near a World War I battlefield such as Verdun, you will eventually end up with your own collection of old ammunition, mortars and shells. Ta -ta. Yeah, like I said, you don't need this with your with your foot. There's nothing better than being told that yes, sure, you can explore the basement. It's down here. We don't really want to come. Go have a look on your own. That I like. This is where the ammo would go down. That's one of the ladders. All the way up. I'm glad I don't have to climb that ladder up there. This is awesome. Now when I look behind me, everyone's gone. There's no one up there, there's no light. I'm back being locked in the basement of a fort. Holy son of a donkey. Just for a minute, they thought I wanted to miss this. This is the fun part. They've done an amazing job restoring this fort upstairs. But this is just fun. The unrestored parts are just, for me, sometimes the most fun. Now, this was built way before World War I, back in the late 1800s, and the design, you can tell, reflects that. It is a completely different layout, a fort with these open hallways above, leading to the artillery cannons. Oh, and this is the other elevator. Well, let's have a look up. This is the other hall. I am sort of glad I don't have to climb it. Well, of course, there is the stairs. The stairs, I'm good with. This is so cool and so clean. I really, really like this. And I heard something at the other end, I don't know what that is, so that's gonna be interesting. One of what I've run into down here. Oh, look at this. This is so 
Now, what are the grooves in the floor? Huh. Oh, no, this is the what well, this is how it's made in sections. That's fine. And here would be the little light. I mean, the powder room would be the little light there that they have nicely preserved upstairs in the large cannon turret. Oh, this is awesome. Look at this. Look at this. I feel I'm walking towards more light. I wonder why. Ooh, that's why. Oh, look at I'm not climbing up that thing. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> they would have an absolute cow if I showed it up there. Another mini Chanel there. Ah, this is gorgeous. This is really fun. This really is something. And I know it's not restored, but honestly, this is fun. And this would be a good place to hide if they actually came into really heavy shelling. And of course, they did fight over this and the adjacent large fort for a few days when the Germans came in 1940. And both the American and French military have used this for storage after the war. And then somebody wanted to scrap it. And then somebody in the city council decided we're going to save it. And he needs a medal because that is just awesome. <sighs> Come on. One more. One more fort. One more fort. One more step search. Yeah. There's something incredibly cool about having, I'm gonna keep calling it a moat. I know it's not a moat and medieval historians don't yell at me. I'm gonna call it a moat. Um, all right, we can also call it a ditch just to make you happy. And honestly, it is a beautiful ditch here protected by the Caponier we were in just a little while ago on all sides and insides, this fort is protected. I love these forts. These are such an amazing piece of history and I'm so glad that you have all these volunteers that are keeping them alive, putting them together, restoring them in despite so many different entities trying to destroy them. But these really truly are the stepping stone from the centralized fort, the stone fort, the castle, with all the little intricacies you have in a castle before the decentralized bunker fortified position. This is the last bastion of that era of forts with moats and castle walls into a new modern world where things like this no longer had a place. Bien, nous avons donc récupéré cette batterie en 2007. The association took over the battery in 2007. À l'intérieur, il n'y avait absolument plus rien. Plus rien, plus rien. In the inside, there was absolutely nothing left. No fittings, no doors, no windows, everything. Plus aucun morceau de métallique, plus aucune partie boisée, plus de cloisons au chambré, il n'y avait plus rien. C'est une coquille d'escargot vide. All right, there were no doors. There were no metallic parts anywhere, no hinges, anything. Uh, it was like a, a snail's shell that had been left empty. Okay. Et depuis donc, depuis 2007, les bénévoles que nous sommes, environ euh, 9, 10 par jour au grand maximum, travaillons à la batterie pour la resto. Right, so the volunteers, there are about 9 or 10 of them, come every day to work to restore the battery to its... its Splendor, present splendor. Alors nous avons donc remis en place les parties métalliques qui pouvaient manquer, les volets métalliques, on a refait des volets, on a refait des portes en bois, on a remis des cloisons en place, et ainsi de suite. Euh, nous sommes à l'heure actuelle depuis 2007 à 75 000 heures de travaux divers et variés. Right, 75 000, 75 000 hours of work. 
have passed since 2007 uh, man hours to restore everything, to put back the metal pieces, the doors, the windows, etc. The metallic, um, the metal uh, shutters covering the windows, things like that. To 2019, the local uh, commune gave them 500 euros a year. Uh, then it was reduced to 375 euros with the COVID. And now, now today, what should we say? De 400, 400 euros. Oh, 400 euros today. All right, so you received some 10, 12,000 euros in 20 years. That's still no money. Uh, it's uh, it's a de forêt, it's nothing. Et nous, nous avons quand même un partenariat avec euh, le port de Nancyport qui est situé à Frouard. Et euh, nous touchons la somme entre 700 et 1000 euros par an en fonction de ces revenus. OK. C'est la seule chose que nous touchons. Ah, yes. It's the, they have a, an agreement with the commercial port here. Uh, the port of Pompey in Nancy mm -hmm. to give them between 700 and 1,000 euros a year, depending on how much business they do. When there are important work needs to be done, Anna will go to the army or to the local authorities or to the region to see if he can get some uh, some cash, but it's not always forthcoming. The engineers can't come help. Army engineers, the génie arrive ici pour aider. Les bénévoles de l'armée, les cadets et tout ça. Oh. Euh, nous avons, nous recevons tous les ans, euh, pendant une journée, les cadets de la gendarmerie. Ah, the gendarmes, les gendarmes cadets arrive uh, one day uh, a year. Voilà. To help. Oh, oh, well, oui. Mais pas l'armée, les génies, the army doesn't come. Well, you can't work them too hard. In 1980, the army just precipitated, left, left. abandoned it, uh, oh, left it open. And because the scrap merchants rushed in yeah. to uh, grab and sell what they could. In 2005, uh, it came to Alan's knowledge that a company wanted to come in here and take away as much stuff as they could find. And so he immediately contacted the army in Metz, uh, who said, uh, no, that's not going to happen. And so at that point, he created an association to take charge, starting with two of them. 77 members of the association, but only seven or eight or nine. Mais tout euh, regularly, who have the time? Il faut yeah. avoir le temps. Ah, bien sûr. Bon, les, les, nous sommes des retraités. Yeah, no, the, 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 the old pensioners. Où il y a des gens qui travaillent et qui viennent, par exemple, euh, les jours de repos. Yeah. Your people come when they have time of work. Yeah. Le, yeah. La moyenne d'âge, tous les ans, tous les jours maintenant, je fais un état. Nombre de personnes, le temps, nombre d'heures, oh. est ce que nous faisons. Et oh. maintenant, j'inclus yeah. la moyenne d'âge. Oh yeah, the, the, the average age of the workers. Alors, 68 ans. 68 years of age. It's not bad. And now you know from where I get my enthusiasm for World War II, World War I, fortresses, old battlefields. It's meeting awesome people like that who are building and caring for places like this. And there's many more to come. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebmus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.